Hi there and welcome to this video on senior physics for motion. In this uh, video we're going to explore um, displacement, velocity and acceleration using the FET simulation. We're going to demonstrate how changing the velocity or changing the acceleration can have an effect on the graphs and try and incorporate what we've already um, looked at um, in, our, in our theory with respect to graphical rep representation to what happens in reality. Obviously this isn't a practical base but it gives you a better understanding as to what's happening. So basically what I'd like you to do is um, this is the website from FET which allows you to download the simulation. I'll also put this link up on the um, post so that you can have a play on your own time. But what I thought we'd do is in this video we would run through the simulation and I'll try and explain what's happening with respect to displacement, velocity and time um, and acceleration, sorry, um, as a person is moving. So when we go onto the link, we get the following simulation which comes about. Now I'll just open the uh, slide up, the file up, and uh, there we go. All right, so this is the introduction area. And basically we've got a guy and we've got a position, we've got a home, we've got a tree, we've got a brick wall. Okay, so basically, we can do a variety of different things. We can change the position that our guy happens to be at, so we can move him in a negative vector. We can also move him in a positive vector, depending on how we uh, want to look at our, our um, situation. We can change our velocity. We can get him going in a negative direction, or we can get him in, going in a positive direction. And again, this links quite nicely with, um, with our, our vector, vector use. Okay. Then we can change the acceleration which is happening. We can have them um, decelerating or we can have them accelerating. So we'll just reset all these so we uh, basically get things started. So that gives us an, an understanding what's gonna happen. So let's start off very, very simply. We're gonna position him at negative 10 away from home and we'll give him a certain velocity, uh, that speed, and then all we'll do is we'll press play. We, we're not gonna get him accelerating. And you can see that this guy moves along. He's moving fairly slowly, let's speed him up. Okay, now you can see the acceleration is changing. And then we get a constant velocity and then he hits the wall. Okay, um, obviously this guy isn't very coordinated. Now on its own, that, that, that doesn't really do a lot for us. Um, what we'd like to do is to be able to see what's happening in a graphical sense. So if you come up to this area here, you can see we've got charts. Now what happens is we can alter the position, the velocity, and the um, acceleration as well. So let's do the same thing. Let's put his position right up at negative 10, and let's give him a basic speed. Uh, let's have him going around about two, two meters per second. I'm gonna keep my acceleration at zero at this point. We're gonna note what's happening with the graph. Now what happens is when I press play, I'm gonna get a trace of what's happening with his position and his velocity. So let's press play and see what happens. So off he goes. And we're gonna stop him when he gets to home. And we get a nice trace. There we go, he's at home. So let's have a look at our graph. Now we know that a distance time graph basically gives us um, an indication, the gradient gives us an indication of the velocity. Now, if you look at our distance time graph, we can see we've got a gradient which has um, been generated, it's a slope. Now, because it's a straight line, it means that we've got a constant velocity. Constant velocity means that we've got zero acceleration. So if you look on the third graph, you can see we've got zero acceleration. Now, on a velocity time graph, a flat horizontal line will depict that basically we've got um, constant velocity. It's not changed from 1.927 meters per second. So autom automatically we can basically see what's what's going on. So that, that's quite useful. We can um, use the graph um, to basically determine the gradient of that blue line there will give us our velocity and that velocity be 1.927 the gradient of this line, because it's horizontal, is zero, which depicts our acceleration. So that's pretty cool. All right, well, let's reset all the data. Let's do another one. 
So in this case, whoops, I'll just uh, stop that there. Let's clear everything and let's put him at negative 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to get him accelerating and we'll start from zero and we're at position basically 10 and we'll have him accelerating at, let's have 2.2. Okay, that, that seems fairly good. So what we'll do is we'll get an acceleration which is generated. Now notice his velocity is gonna start at zero. So basically what's happening as he's moving, we'll stop him there. Alrighty, so let's have a look and analyze our data. Right, now we know that he had a, an acceleration and we know that he started at position 10 meters away from home, negative 10 meters away from home. Now, look what happens to the blue line. We're getting this nice curve. This curve is generated because it's accelerating. There's no constant velocity. Now look at the velocity time graph. Instead of having a horizontal, which denoted a constant velocity, we've now got a gradient. Now the gradient of a velocity time graph will give us a, an acceleration. And if it's a straight line going, going upwards on a gradient, it means that we've got a constant acceleration. So if we look down at the green line, we can see that we've got a constant flat acceleration now what happened was as soon as he hit the brick wall his acceleration dropped to zero and then he bounced back again um, back up to uh, to, to a zero acceleration once he bounced back off the wall so basically what we've now got we've demonstrated that we've got the curve in a displacement time graph denoting that the velocity is not constant on our velocity time graph we've got a nice straight line gradient meaning that we've got a constant acceleration. And then a flat line on our acceleration time graph shows that we've got a constant acceleration again. So you can see now that this is quite a useful tool that we can start playing all over the place. Now we could have it going in the opposite direction. Sorry, I'll just reset it. And uh, we can put him, put our guy right over here and we might have him going at this speed and we can start playing and you can see what's happening as we as we move around we change the slope of the graph now you'll notice that on our displacement time graph that we've got a nice smooth straight line we've got zero acceleration and we're going at a velocity of 5.78 well his velocity is constant 5.78 this will be the same as the slope of the gradient on the displacement time graph. The only difference here is he's going in a negative direction. He's going in the opposite direction to the way we've started. And we can do exactly the same and we can put a, um, we can put, no, we're moving back up here. We can put a um, acceleration in there. Uh, let's have um, an acceleration there and uh, let's see what happens. Whoops, got him going in the wrong direction there. All right, let's reset it all. Let's move him to away and we'll have him going in that negative acceleration. And off we go, watch him go. All righty, so again, what we've got here is a constant acceleration. Look at the slope here. This slope here, the gradient, basically gives us the acceleration. It's this nice straight line, which means it's a constant acceleration. And then if we look at our displacement time graph, we've got a curve. But notice they're all going in the opposite directions. That's denoted by the fact that it's a negative, um, negative situation. We're going from positive to negative, negative this way, just meaning that he's going in velocity in the opposite direction. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. It's, um, it's a nice little tool that we can utilize and uh, you can have a play and start changing the variables around, changing the position, the velocity and the acceleration. And as a result, you should get an understanding as to how um, velocity time graphs, uh, the displacement time graphs, velocity time graphs and acceleration time graphs all work together. Okay, well, I hope you found that useful. 
um, do have a go at, at playing with the link yourself and check out some of the other interactive websites that I put on this post. Thanks for watching and I look forward to you joining me again.